Hello guys, how are you all? Welcome back to my channel. So, today we are gonna see, what if Inada cheated on Naruto and married with Sasuke, part 1, subscribe if you enjoy the video, and also check the description, so let's begin the story. She felt his fist connect with her stomach and went crashing down to the ground, barely having time to register what was happening. She lay still for a second, winded, but seeing him bearing down on her, she rolled to the side before he slammed his fist into the exact spot where she had been the moment before. He meant business. This was not how Hinata had planned the start of her day. It was supposed to be a day like any other, with her waking up at an unearthly hour before any shinobi would be up, she automatically excluded Gai-sensei and Lee-san, and going to train at her designated training area before her official training schedule. She liked the place it was secluded and quiet, and the surrounding overgrowth of trees and shrubs, ensured that she would be away from prying and judgmental eyes. Hinata could be relatively sure that no one would intrude upon her early morning training regime. So she was surprised and mildly annoyed to find that someone else had beaten her to it. When she saw Wo had appropriated himself in her own corner, her feelings turned to apprehension, and more than a little reluctance to make her presence felt. Hinata had turned to leave, deciding that for today she would find another place, when the sound of someone calling her, arrested her in her tracks. Fight with me. She had turned, gawping unattractively at Ichiha Sasuke as he looked impassively at her, wondering if she had taken leave of her senses or if had. She most certainly did not want to fight with him, and couldn't think of any reason why he would want to fight with someone like her. Not to mention the fact that they barely knew each other, that Niji Niasen would not approve, and that her father would be even less pleased that she was training with the Achiha, and she didn't want to. Well? The sound of his impatient voice cut through her frenzied thoughts, and she nodded mutely and slipped into her fighting stance, before she knew what she was doing. There was no way that she could possibly measure up to him, as was patently obvious now that she was being beaten up unmercifully by the newly reintegrated ex-missing Nin. Sasuke had been back in Kanoha for well over a year, most of which had been spent in prison and under house arrest. The reason why he had not been executed was the fact that he had fought side by side with his former teammates in the final battle of Kanoha, and much as it jarred with the council, had held a pivotal role in saving the village. Restraining seals had been placed upon him as a pacifying gesture to appease those skeptical of his loyalties, reducing his ability to tap fully into his chakra reserves, but quite frankly, that only made her feel more humiliated by the fact that she had barely managed to graze him. This was nothing like training with her team, she felt as though she were fighting for her life. Anata froze as he caught her arm and twisted it behind her, forcing her to the ground. She was trapped. Well fought, Ichihasan, she stuttered nervously. It was a waste of time he said impassively and let her go, turning and walking away. Hinata stared at his retreating back and tried to ignore the burning feeling of deja vu. It was her father, her sister and cousin all over again. Humiliation rose like bile in her throat. The next day, she went again. Sasuke was already there and she walked slowly towards him, forcing herself not to turn and run away, especially when he stopped and glowered at her. Something stronger than her fear and timidity pushed her towards him. Her voice was hoarse as she tried not to drop her gaze. Please fight with me. He looked at her and snorted. Hinata attacked. Even she had her pride. It was surreal how easily the first impromptu spar became an everyday occurrence. Sasu kept turning up every morning, and after her initial, unsuccessful, attempt to beat him, he apparently assumed that Hinata would spar with him as soon as she arrived. Hinata obliged. It was a strange partnership and initially rather uncomfortable. Neither of them was very vocal even at the best of times, and they scarcely talked beyond what was strictly necessary. Hinata was initially far too intimidated by the Ichiha's sour look, Hennever seemed disposed to pursue any kind of conversation. Still, neither of them seemed inclined to back out of the unspoken agreement. They needed each other, as simple as that. Hinata wished she could think of it as a mutually beneficial arrangement, but knew that she was the one who was gaining most out of it. Sasuke was no Niji he did not go out of his way to teach her or encourage her, but after the first couple of times where he would simply glare at her when she committed some errors, he started dropping some, very good, hints about her technique while they were sparring. Moreover, he was unpredictable and had a vast range of techniques up his sleeve, Hinata had to be constantly on the alert and ready to improvise, giving her the chance to expand her style. She, on the other hand, was Sasuke's sole sparring partner when the Ichiha's old team were on missions. The Godim did not trust him out of the village, and there was only so much you could do on your own. If Hinata had to be completely honest, he was stuck with her whether he wanted to or not, because no one else in the village would get close to the Achiha, much less train with him. She did not speak to anyone during these sessions because even though she felt rather guilty for keeping it quiet, she knew it would be easier to keep it secret, as she dreaded to think of any reactions her morning trysts would garner from her family or her teammates. Ichiha Sasuke was persona non grata in Kanoha, and she didn't think it was likely to change soon. 
Thus, she let everyone assume that she trained alone, tranquil in the fact that few people would venture out at such an hour or in their designated training area. She became so used to the idea that no one would come near, that when one morning she sensed an all too familiar and unexpected presence she completely lost concentration, allowing Sasu to send her flying into the nearest tree. As she slid down to the ground, stunned, she heard a loud voice furiously berating Sasuke. Naruto-kun she thought dazedly and before sliding into unconsciousness. No way to treat. Distracted heard him. Team. You're just. The sound of voices washed over her as she came to, catching brief snatches of the loud, welcome voice and the slower drawl of an apparently irritated shinobi. Her eyes flickered open and caught sight of Naruto's face hovering anxiously over hers, whereupon she nearly passed out again. There was another reason, one she did not fully like to acknowledge to herself for why she kept on training with Sasuke. It was the hope that somehow, Naruto-kun might notice her. Surely the fact that she was training with his best friend would get her some acknowledgement from the blonde. Hinata, notwithstanding her 18 years, still harbored a fondness for him which had shown no sign of abating. The fact that he'd suddenly turned up at their training session thrilled her, but on the other hand, having made such a fool of herself. She's waking up. Hinata swallowed and smiled uncertainly, hoping her red face would not give her feelings away. Naruto-kun she whispered, getting unsteadily up, Ichiha said I'm sorry. This sent off Naruto on a rant of how it wasn't her fault, it was completely Sasuke team's fault, and how she wasn't to worry Hinata drank it all in, ecstatic that his attention was completely focused on her. She would have taken a thousand knocks for the joy of having Naruto get so anxious over her, and she kept her eyes down, almost afraid of betraying herself with her gaze. Sasuke was standing impatiently to the side, apparently unimpressed by Naruto's tirade. Why are you here? He asked curtly. I came to find you yesterday morning when we came back, but you weren't at home," Naruto said grinning. So I decided to find out where you were sneaking off so early. He nudged Sasuke in the ribs, and the dark-eyed nin winced. You're busted Sasuke. Hinata sighed imperceptibly as the blonde continued to rib the Achiha for not having noticed he was being followed. So much for her master plan of getting Naruto to notice her via Sasuke. Still, at least he got here. Sasuke was not the ideal candidate for Kanoha's nicest sensei. He was a hard taskmaster, demanding and relentless and freely dealt out scathing comments when Hinata committed any kind of faux pas. Strangely enough, she didn't mind. As long as he doled out good advice on how she could improve, she could take the knocks and bruises which were the side effects of training with someone like the Achiha. It was simply his way. He did not treat her differently to what he would treat anyone else. She knew that her team did. They all coddled her somewhat, even Kurenai sensei who at times would hold back a punch she would have given unthinkingly had it been Kiba or Shino, or even one of the other Kinoichi. Training with someone who never even thought of her as fragile, was refreshing. So Hinata became vastly annoyed when Sasuke started to let her land punches, and she managed to stop her see through some of his attacks. It was bad enough to have her team go unintentionally easy on her, but she would not stand it from him as well. She was upset enough to confront him after one session and politely ask him why he was letting up and going easy on her. Sasuke looked at her oddly as she fidgeted beneath his gaze, as though he were wondering if she'd gone mad. I'm not he growled impatiently and turned his back on her. Take some credit, instead of bothering me, Baka. Sasuke muttered as he strode off leaving her mouth half open, letting her realize that it was her who had changed. Gurunai sensei remarked on it as they sparred, especially after she fought with Kiba, and unexpectedly managed to grab him and slam him to the ground, nearly breaking his nose in the process. Hinata was mortified, and spent the whole day apologizing for it, but secretly a small part of her was placid that she actually managed to turn the tables on Kiba. Sasuke, in his own twisted way, was helping her more than anyone else had done, though she wasn't quite what he had meant to be. Unlike her father, who had simply given up on her, Sasuke broke her perception of her own limits and pushed her beyond. Her Byakugan never would be the strongest, but even though she was high Uga, she could excel in other types of combat. Anada was a well-brought-up girl, and it dismayed her that she had no idea how to thank her morose companion properly. She doubted he'd appreciate her attempts to vocally show her gratitude, and anyway, she wanted to feel redress the balance of their lopsided relationship. He was giving her so much, whereas she was barely doing anything for him. The opportunity presented unexpectedly. Sasuke was keeping her longer at the training grounds, and it was getting hard to make it back home to eat breakfast before meeting up with her team for official training. She was frankly tired of going hungry every day, and bringing food with her to replenish her energy seemed a good idea. It also struck her that it would be a good idea to prepare a bento box for Sasuke-san. 
In one of Naruto's unexpected visits, he had mentioned that the Achiha not fond of cooking and had a very cavalier attitude eating regularly. What Naruto had actually said was that Sasuke team was a disaster round the kitchen and that if it weren't for him and Sakura and the joys of pre-cooked meals, he'd have starved to death long ago. Whereupon Sasuke had told him to shut up, Naruto retaliated and it all denigrated into a fight. As usual. Hinata had been struck by how ill Sasuke had looked the first time she had met him at the training grounds. Though already light-skinned previously, his skin had held an almost translucent quality, evidencing his lack of exposure to sunlight. The dark rings around his eyes had not helped his overall look, and Hinata had been hard-pressed to recognize the boy who turned the heads of all the Kinoichi in his ear. Now he had regained some of his color and no longer looked so unhealthy, however, beside Naruto's well-built frame, Sasuke seemed positively skinny. Going by what Naruto had said, it was not surprising. Hinata was certain that Sasuke would not tolerate any semblance of pity or charity from her side, the Sugas chant that she was worried about his eating habits would not go down well. This called for diplomacy, and whatever Hayuga Hinata was lacking in the fighting department, she could boast plenty of tact. While unpacking her bento box after training, she noticed that Sasuke's shoulders tensed at the tantalizing smell of tea and food wafting towards him. Hinata placed everything neatly on the ground before standing up and making her way towards the Achiha, who was apparently ignoring her and her breakfast. She waited beside him until he paused in his training, turning towards her with a frown. What? He said ungraciously as she bowed apologetically, trying not to stammer. I brought some breakfast with me, Sasuke and she said hesitantly, and I would be grateful if you would join me. His frown deepened. No thanks he said shortly, and was about to recommence training when Hinata spoke up again. Please it it's a way for me to thank you for my training she said timidly, tapping her fingers together in a nervous gesture. I prepared everything this morning and her voice petered out, and she dropped her gaze, her shoulders sagging slightly. I'm not doing this for your sake, Hayuga Sasuke said gruffly, and she bit back a smile. I know that she said. But I still would like to thank you. Sasuke looked at her narrowly and shrugged before stalking to where she had set out the food. He did not say anything, but Hinata noticed that he all but licked his plate clean. She smiled to herself and started bringing a double portion every day. Naruto and I are taking the next Chunin exam. Hinata looked startled. She had almost forgotten that Naruto-kun and Sasuke-san were still genin. Really, it was almost ludicrous to think that two of the most powerful shinobi in Konoha, no, in Fire Country, and even beyond, were still at that level. It's strange she said lamely. I mean, you and Naruto-kun. Sasuke shrugged philosophically. Same rules apply to everyone. Will they let you become Chuan in the question was innocently enough, but the second she blurted it out, she slapped her hands to her mouth, horrified at how insensitive it seemed. She could feel herself burning as Sasuke looked at her. Because of my record you mean he asked dryly, and she nodded before shaking her head and then covering her face in distress. Sunade will make sure there's no tampering with the results he said quietly, and her shoulders sagged in relief, happy that he had understood what she had meant and hadn't taken offense. His next words arrested her. Or are you worried I'm not capable or deserving enough to be he asked coldly. Hinata grew nearly purple with embarrassment as she incoherently tried to deny it and apologize in one breath, while wondering whether she should get up and run for her life. Then, as she grew more and more flustered as the dark-eyed Nin continued to glare at her while she stuttered and stumbled through explanations and excuses, she noticed that his lips were twitching. Twitching. Hinata narrowed her eyes at the Achiha, who suddenly gave a very un -Sasuke like snort. Sasuke's son. She huffed at him indignantly as he tried to stop himself from smiling, thinking that it was too bad of him to frighten her so. Your face was a sight to behold he told her, smirking, and Hinata struggled with a childish impulse to stick out her tongue at him. He looked vastly amused as she tried to regain her composure and failed, and she opted instead to make a face at the grinning Achiha. It occurred to her suddenly that they were friends. Both Sasuke and Naruto passed the first part easily. They weren't worried about the upcoming test, why would they be? But Hinata still wanted to wish them luck before they left. On the morning of the second test, Hinata waited for Sasuke near the gates of the Ichiha compound, shifting uneasily from one foot to the other, almost afraid of her own daring. Her father would not be pleased to know that his daughter was loitering near that plasu of the boy around. She had been lucky so far, no one had called her to task for training with Sasuke, and she wanted to keep it that way. When Sasuke came out, he looked surprised to see her there. She greeted him and quickly drew out a small jar out of her pocket and held it out. He looked at her questioningly but made no move to take it. It's an ointment I make she told him hesitantly. Use it to heal small cuts and bruises he continued into the silence. Hinata fidgeted nervously. Somewhere along the way, she'd started respecting and even liking Sasuke, but at times, he could be as touchy as an old woman. She hoped he wouldn't think that she was implying that he might get hurt. She was surprised when he took it from her. 
What he said, a hint of amusement in his voice, you wanted me to take it, didn't you? Hinata looked at him embarrassedly, annoyed at herself for acting like a scared rabbit, and nodded. I just wasn't sure you would she admitted shyly, and he snorted and slipped it into his bag. Thanks he said and she smiled, relieved, and wished him luck. He shrugged and made it as if to leave, but Hinata cleared her throat, and he looked back at her inquisitively. She swallowed nervously. Do she stuttered, poking her fingertips together, a nervous habit she'd not quite managed to break, have another jar, and I wondered if you would give it to Naruto-kun she asked pleadingly. No. She drew a breath in sharply, rather hurt by the coolness of his tone, and she was surprised and troubled by the flash of anger. On his features before he schooled them into his usual look of impassivity. You can give it to him yourself he told her brusquely. Aye aye. What he asked her bitingly, black eyes glinting as they bored into her white ones. Surely, he can't be more frightening than I am he continued snidely as Hinata stared at him mutely. It was not surprising that he'd noticed that at times he still scared her, what made her wonder was the fact that he seemed almost off and deadbeat. Ayu he looked at her for a long moment as she tried to speak, hating her inability to explain herself. Lips pressed tightly together, he spared her one last contemptuous look and started walking. Why dot you're not as frightening as you used to be Sasuke's and she burst out desperately and immediately winced at how idiotic that sounded, her face turning a dull red. Sasuke paused and looked at her over his shoulder. She couldn't read his expression, but oh, she wished that she could take back the past 15 minutes and never ever speak of them again. Miserably, she waited with her head bowed, wishing she had never brought those stupid jars. And they call Met Atlas he muttered, and her head jerked up to look at him. Come on, or we'll be lady told her as she nodded, relieved, before jamming his hands into his pockets and striding off. Hinata followed. There were few people about, it being still early, and Sasuke and Hinata had walked together in silence to the Raymond stand, where Naruto and Sakura were waiting. After some small talk and wishes of good luck from the two Kanoichi, a tight hug and a promise to bash their heads in, if they failed to become Chunin from Sakura, and a quiet murmur from Hinata the boys turned to leave. Sasuke spoke up suddenly, Hi Uga, aren't you forgetting that ointment? Hinata flushed to the roots of her hair. She had given up on giving it to Naruto it had also suddenly dawned on her that making an amateurish medicinal ointment for a shinobi who had the Hokage's apprentice on his team was rather foolish, and she wasn't sure whether she wanted to thank or kick Sasuke for making it impossible for her to get out of it. Ha ah, hi she stuttered as she rummaged through her bag and drew out the jar. She handed it to Naruto, staring at the ground all the while. It's some of my healing ointment he said to none in particular, wishing the earth would simply open up and swallow her. That's so cool of you, Hinata-chan Naruto said enthusiastically as he took it, grinning at her engagingly, unknowingly making her weak at the knees. I remember this from our first exams, it's great stuff he enveloped her in a quick hug, and Hinata felt almost ready to faint as she mumbled something incoherent. Sasuke sighed impatiently and growled something about being late, and after a final round of well wishes and goodbyes, the two boys left, leaving something of an emptiness in their wake. The two girls smiled hesitantly at each other, and Sakura asked Hinata to walk with her to the hospital. The younger girl complied. The two Kanoichi were something more than acquaintances but not quite friends, they met occasionally in hospital and had gone to a few missions together, but they were not close. Indeed, Hinata felt that she knew Sakura less than she knew the taciturn Sasuke, and remembering how the pink-haired girl had been obsessed with Ichiha, Hinata had been surprised when no Sakura turned up with Naruto at their training sessions. The dynamics of the original Team 7 were not something Hinata understood completely, and this sudden lack of possessive behavior from Sakura's side puzzled her. You've been very good to Sasuke Sakura told Hinata suddenly. I'm glad I can do something for one of Naruto-kun's friends Hinata said, coloring slightly. She noticed that Sakura was looking at her with a strange look in her eyes, but Hinata wasn't sure what to make of it. Sakura seemed about to say something but changed her mind, and Hinata didn't quite like to ask. They walked in silence, the pink-haired Kinoichi deep in thought, and Hinata was almost glad when they finally reached the hospital gates and separated. Naruto and Sasuke sailed through, easily beating all their adversaries, at least, those who stood their ground instead of forfeiting their match. Hinata was forcibly reminded of how strong they were when they faced off against each other in the final. When they decided to call it a draw, she felt almost ill in relief as she wanted neither of them to get badly hurt. Well done she told him smilingly the next morning as they were resting after a grueling training session. He wiped his face with his towel and gave her a sidelong look. So, do you think I deserve to pass he asked her, smirking. Hinata nodded. Yes she said solemnly, and Sasuke smiled satisfied. Though of course she continued thoughtfully, the standards for Chuanin aren't what they were in my day. She ducked laughing, barely managing to avoid the towel Sasuke had thrown at her head. Their cooking is fantastic, Hinata-chan Naruto enthused as he shoveled rice into his mouth. Sasuke glared daggers at him, and Hinata colored and ducked her head. 
compliments, especially from Naruto-kun, still caught her by surprise. The blonde shinobi had taken to joining them more often at their morning session to Hinata's secret delight and Sasuke's not-so-secret annoyance. This lack of enthusiasm from Sasuke's part on Naruto's self-inclusion had rather astonished her. He was a far better match for Sasuke than she would ever be, and it was obviously more beneficial for the dark-haired nin to train with him. Big Sasuke muttered as he watched him eat, and Hinata sighed. Naruto had a prodigious appetite and could eat at a rate that beggared belief, his share disappearing before Hinata had barely started on her food. This, of course, irritated Sasuke to no end, and he berated Naruto about his lack of table manners incessantly. Not that Naruto cared. If anything, he enjoyed provoking him even more. Sasuage Ayasin is just jealous because he can't eat as much Naruto crowded, swiped off the last dumpling off Sasuke's plate and popped it whole into his mouth. The Achiha looked positively murderous, and Hinata decided it would be appropriate to intervene before Naruto got skewered with his own chopsticks. Um, would you like some tea, Sasuke Hinata asked hurriedly as he glowered. I'd prefer the Baka's head on a plate he muttered acidly, which Hinata diplomatically took as a yes and poured out some tea. Oh loosen up, Sasuke Ajayasin Naruto said lazily, stretching out his arms. I'll leave more for you next time, so you won't stay whining about it. I suppose it didn't occur to you that it would be polite to leave some for Hinata, would it Sasuke asked bitingly, and Naruto looked immediately contrite. I'm an idiot he said sheepishly, and rubbed his head, say, you're not mad are you Hinata-chan? Cause I really didn't mean to eat up everything. Hinata shook her head. I always make enough for three people, Naruto-kun she said shyly, and there's more than enough for me. Naruto smiled brightly at her, making her heart beat faster, and she busied herself with the tea, trying to hide the rising blush on her face. Well, you just tell me if I behave like a selfish idiot again he told her as Sasuke snorted. Naruto made a face at his teammate before continuing. But you make it hard for me not to eat with all that great food Hinata-chan he said, rubbing his stomach contentedly and sighed. I would love to have someone like you to cook for me every day. Hinata nearly dropped her cup at the thought that one day one day she and Naruto come. She squeaked as he wrapped an arm around her and hugged her. Say, you know what Hina-chan is Naruto asked her, unaware that she was on the verge of fainting away, your husband will be one lucky man he smiled cheerfully at her as Hinata blushed to the roots of her hair, unable to speak. Don't you think so too, Sasuke-kun the blonde continued impishly, winking at Hinata. Sasuke inhaled sharply and slammed his plate down. Hinata looked at him astonished. Sasuke looked from her to Naruto before standing up and turning his glare onto the blonde. You, Naruto, are an idiot he snapped and stormed away, leaving the other two staring in his wake. What's gotten into him Naruto asked Hinata, bewildered. Hinata shook her head, her happy mood draining slowly away. She bit her lip as Naruto got up and wondered why Sasuke had to go and spoil such a precious moment. Naruto had left and Hinata was clearing away her weapons when she felt someone behind her. Sasuke she said without turning round, feeling his gaze on her. Why did you call Naruto-kun an idiot there was no answer and Hinata finished packing her things and shifted her bag onto her back. He was only being nice to me she continued quietly into the silence. I know that Sasuke said and something in his tone made her turn to face him. He was standing with his hands jammed into his trouser pockets, not quite looking at her. Naruto says what comes to mind he continued slowly, which isn't a good thing. What do you mean Hinata was genuinely puzzled and even a little hurt. Did Sasuke think that Naruto was wrong in what he'd said about her? Do you think that I was wrong she asked, trying to keep her voice neutral. Sasuke stared at her for a second. That's not what I he started hurriedly before his voice trailed away and he raked his fingers through his hair while she stared blankly at him. I'm no good at this he muttered seemingly to himself, and on meeting her questioning gaze, something seemed to snap. Look, I'll try to make this clear he said sharply, Naruto is an idiot he continued emphatically, but you could try using your eyes he paused as he looked at her expectantly, but when there was no change in her expression he scowled. I'll see you tomorrow he snapped and disappeared, leaving Hinata still unsatisfied and no less mystified than before. Hinata could barely believe how close she and Naruto had become. He talked to her more often, telling her about his missions and even asking her for some advice on cooking and housekeeping, and she had stopped fainting every time he addressed her. She wasn't sure where all of this was leading to, but any chance to be close to her idol was a blessing. When he asked her what if she knew much about flowers, it came as a surprise, as she never thought he would be interested in horticulture. They were taking a break from training, sitting together with Sasuke and drinking tea when he surprised her with a question. I know more about herbs she admitted, handing Sasuke his tea you'd have to talk to Ino about flowers. Naruto made a face at that. I'd rather ask you if that's okay he said, looking sheepish, you're easier to talk to. Hanada smiled shyly at the unexpected compliment. But herbs don't mean things do they he asked curiously. Sasuke snorted. Of course they do. They were even used to communicate between clan members. 
How am I supposed to know if it's um clan thing Naruto glared at Sasuke who turned away, smirking. Hinata intervened quietly. Herbs mean a lot of things, Naruto-kun. They're not used so often nowadays, but they hold meanings in old tales and legends. Really he looked like a child with his wide-eyed gaze, curious and expectant. Yes. Hinata swirled the tea in her cup gently before continuing. Time symbolizes luck, strength or courage, and was given to warriors going out to battle, sage was placed in amulets for wisdom and esteem, rosemary as a token between friends for remembrance, and basil was exchanged between a couple and love. She smiled slightly, remembering how she would while away the hot summer evenings, telling her daughter the stories of old, stories of warriors and princesses, of monsters and dragons, while Hinata listened and dreamed childish dreams of true love and hope. A sudden cough interrupted her reminiscences, and she remembered with a start where she was. Oh Hinata blushed when she realized that she had been daydreaming in front of her two companions. Sasuke looked amused Naruto thoughtful, both of them waving away her stammered apologies. Ichiha stood up and told her that he would continue training and Hinata nodded, still embarrassed by her drifting off in such a manner. Naruto waited until Sasuke was out of earshot and turned to her. But, flowers can be used like that too, Raidi asked. Yes, of course she said distractedly, still thinking about how absurd and rude she must have seemed, losing herself in her own thoughts while talking to the other two. So, which flowers symbolize love he asked casually, and her head jerked up to stare at him. A love. There are many she stuttered, caught by surprise at the unexpectedness of the question. It depends on on personal tastes I suppose. Naruto was blushing slightly. Which are your favorites he asked, running his fingers through his thick hair as she stared at him, mouth dry and heart fluttering wildly. Hinata took a deep breath and tried to compose herself. Primroses she replied softly as Naruto nodded and looked relieved, as though a great weight had been lifted off his mind. I'll keep that in mind he said cheerfully. Thanks, Hinata-chan. The Kinoichi watched him as he left after waving goodbye, her heart beating fast and her thoughts completely in a whirl. Naruto was deployed to a two-month mission together with Sakura, soon after his conversation with Hinata, leaving her plenty of time to ruminate over her past conversations, and wonder, almost desperately, if there was something hidden in those words. What she felt for Naruto was more than a simple liking, and even on missions, at home, when training with Sasuke or with her team, she thought about him constantly. Hinata was in love. He reappeared one morning, still dusty and dirty from the journey back to Konoha, just as Hinata was about to leave to join her team. Naruto wrapped his arms around her and bodily lifted her up as she squeaked in embarrassment. It's good to be back Hinata-chan he said grinning, while she laughed and tried unsuccessfully to detach herself, face burning. Bawasasu kun have you come for your hug too? Naruto let go of Hinata and opened his arms invitingly as the Ichiha approached. Sasuke scowled. Idiot he muttered as Hinata giggled. I missed you too Naruto said innocently, and Kakashi needs to see you, which is why I came here to call you before I even went to the Chirakus. The blonde ended dramatically. Sasuke rolled his eyes as he collected his belongings. You need to bathe more than you need more Raymond he said snootily as he nodded at Hinata, leaving before Naruto got a chance to reply. I don't smell that bad. Naruto yelled after him. It's your fault cause I came to deliver that stupid message anyway Naruto sniffed indignantly. The ungrateful idiot. He grumbled before turning to Hinata. There was another reason why I came here though he said, putting an arm around her shoulder. Naruto leaned down confidentially, and Hinata looked at him inquisitively, congratulating herself on not passing out. I'd like to talk to you for a second Hinata-chan he told her, and she nodded, heart beating wildly. See, tomorrow night we're holding a surprise party for Sakura-chan, and well, I'd like Yado come specially. He grinned self-consciously as he spoke, and Hinata stared at him. Was he asking her out please, Hina-chan he asked again, mistaking the look on her face for one of reluctance, it's important to me that you'll be there. Then Naruto winked at her, trust me, I'm going to give you some news tonight which I don't think you'll want to miss he said conspiratorially. Hinata managed to nod and whisper out that yes, yes I'd love to come, and where was the party going to be? If she had any girl friends she probably would have rushed to ask about their opinion, dissect the conversation, and wonder if this confirmed whether Naruto cared for her or not, and then she'd have chosen or borrowed the perfect clothes to wear. But Hinata didn't have any close friends. She didn't like to bother Kurenai-sensei with something as trivial, and she barely knew Ino or Tenten. She thought fleetingly of her little sister, but dismissed the thought immediately, as Hanabi was completely uninterested in any girly stuff. Hanada sighed and set out to find something decent to wear. Her civilian clothes were limited to a number of yukatas, and formal kimonos high Uga Hanada was not the kind to indulge in buying many dresses or accessories. She settled on a pink yukata with purple lilacs, not too formal but not too casual, and brushed her hair until it shone. Naruto had once said that he liked long hair and thought hers, though rather plain, was not ugly. Naruto had outdone himself. 
The apartment was decorated with festoons and banners, and a good amount of food and drink was piled on the tables. All their former classmates were present as well as Team Guy, though she couldn't for the life of her understand how Tenten had managed to convince Niji to turn up, and some of Sakura's co-workers had come. Even Kakashi Sensei was sitting near the window, his nose stuck into one of his books. Biba, with his current girlfriend hanging off his arm, told Hinata that Naruto was bringing Sakura over. Hinata felt a fleeting sense of disappointment that he wasn't there, but she consoled herself with the fact that he had to be the one to get Sakura to the party. While chatting with Kiba and Shino, a name caught her attention. Two girls she didn't know were talking in hushed whispers about Ichiha Sasuke, who apparently had come to the party. Hinata looked around for him and saw him sitting alone at a table, nursing a bottle of sake. Before she had time to be surprised that the stoke Ichiha had turned up, Kiba loudly started grumbling about how the ex-missing Min had dared show his face. He's a friend of Naruto-kun, and Sakura-chan Hinata murmured trying to be placating, and he's no longer under arrest. He's a traitor, Hinata. Kiba said loudly and Hinata winced as heads turned their way. Kiba, please she said, wishing that this was not happening. Kiba was her friend, but Sasuke was too, even though no one else was aware of it. She became aware of the looks people were darting at Sasuke, and of the wide berth they were giving his table, of the murmurs and counter-murmurs, and she bit her lips nervously. I'm just stating facts Kiba snarled before gulping down his sake and seemed ready to continue ranting when Shino interfered. Enough he ordered quietly. We're guests here too. Naruto invited him and you have to respect his wishes. Kiba glowered and a heated exchange started between the two. Hanada looked at her two best friends arguing in a whisper and looked at Sasuke. She remembered the way he had shown her how to perform a particularly difficult kata that same morning, his roundabout way of telling her that he was pleased when she got it right. She thought of the way he always positioned his eating utensils perfectly straight at the center of his plate after he'd finished, of how he always separated the food on his plate before eating each part methodically. She thought about how he strove to hide how fond he was of Naruto by arguing ceaselessly with him, of how he scrunched up his nose when torn between being annoyed and laughing at his friend. Little details, which she'd learned, unimportant details which made him human, which made him her friend. Somehow, along the way, she'd forgotten the last of the Achiha so many people still resented and feared, and saw only Sasuke. Before she knew what was happening, she found herself standing in front of Achiha Sasuke, leaving Shino and Kiba staring in her wake. She had gone mad, she had to be mad, because if her father got to know about this, even if Sasuke had not betrayed Konoha, he would still have been in Achiha, there would never be an end to it. She could feel curious and unfriendly glances directed towards her, and she swallowed nervously. Sasu kept toying with his glass, seemingly ignoring her presence. How are you, Sasuke-san? She asked politely, hoping that her voice did not betray how uncomfortable she felt with so many people looking at her. Sasu looked up, his dark eyes meeting her white ones. Ecstatic he growled, moodily downing another glass of clear liquid. Hinata almost smiled. I'm glad you're enjoying it she said sweetly, and he shot her a look. Very funny he grumbled. He looked at her speculatively and then smirked at her. Would you sit down? Or are you afraid? He asked idly and she felt her hackles rise. She sat down, pressing her lips together, well aware of Kiba's glares and of muted whispers. So tell me hi Uga Sasuke murmured, leaning towards her, noticing her unease. What brings you to the table of the big bad wolf? Charity. Pity. A chance to show the world how brave you are. He purred. He took a sip of his sake, eyes never leaving her face. You're drunk she told him calmly. How can you tell? Sasuke asked her lazily. You're talking too much to be sober Hinata told him briskly and saw a smile disappearing behind his hand. I needed to get through this he said, casting a glance over the bonhomie that surrounded them. How did he convince you to come? She asked timidly. Hey. Both Kakashi and Naruto he corrected her. With endless bestering and emotional blackmail he grumbled. What kind of news couldn't have been shared quietly at home? Hinata laughed quietly at his obvious discomfort and wasn't prepared for his sudden seriousness. No one knows about our morning training do they? He asked quietly. Judging by the general feeling of amazement at the fact that we're sharing a table, I'm assuming that you don't go talking about it. She was startled at the sudden change of track. Well I she faltered. No. Dark eyes bored into hers and she dropped her gaze. Why not? Why my father wouldn't approve she admitted slowly. And my teammates, they would want explanations and and pester me and threaten you and and she shook her head, as if to clear her head of thoughts. It seemed easier like this she said simply. Sasuke was looking at her narrowly. Are you ashamed of training with me? What? No. Her cheeks burned in indignation. I'm not ashamed of my friends. The words were out of her mouth before she could stop herself. Sasuke had a strange look on his face, and she wondered if she'd been too forward for his liking. I, I like to think of Sasuke as a friend of mine she resumed, looking at him timidly, if that's okay with you. 
He shrugged slightly. I don't mind he said, and Hinata smiled happily. She knew him well enough by now to know that was the closest she would get to him, admitting that he was actually pleased. Thank you she told him. He poured out a glass of sake and pushed it towards her. You know, I cast a type of misdirection while we're training he said conversationally, so that people who don't know we're there already can't come across us. Technically, no one knows about us, so I'd keep it that way if I were you he continued. They might think you're learning some terrible perverted forbidden form from Arachimaru's pupil. Hinata nearly choked. Sasuke. She spluttered reproachfully, but he wasn't looking at her. Rescue Corps are on their way he murmured, and she followed his gaze and saw Tenton approach. You're going to get re-aimed for talking to me he said, a hint of dark amusement in his voice. Hinata put her cup down. Maybe she said quietly. But I don't mind. Tenton arrived. The brown-haired girl nodded coldly to Sasuke before turning to Hinata with a smile. Could you help me out with some things in the kitchen, Hinata-chan? Hinata nodded and stood up. Enjoy the rest of the evening, Sasuke she told the Achiha, and he grunted as she turned and followed the other girl. Denton was silent until they got into the kitchen. Niji was there, fuming. What were you thinking? He hissed as soon as the kitchen door closed behind them. Hinata looked at him in surprise, but before she could answer, Tenton spoke up. We all know you're kind-hearted, Hinata-chan she told her reprovingly, but he brought it on himself. Hinata felt a sudden spurt of anger at their chastisement. What right had they to tell her what she could or could not do? Why did she have to stand there and listen to them criticize her? And don't forget that Ichiha is responsible for severe injuries of nearly half of Rookie 9, including your teammates and team guy. Niji finished, Tenten nodding in agreement. You mustn't go anywhere near him. Hinata looked from her cousin to Tenten, both of them looking at her expectantly, waiting for her to agree with them humbly and promise never to approach Sasuke again. Fury had been building within her as they spoke, and she was trembling when they finished. How dare they judge her and Sasuke and order her not to speak to him again. What she said surprised even her. He's not the only one who nearly killed one of Rookie 9 she said coldly, as she drew herself up to her full height and glared squarely at her cousin. Niji paled as Tenten gaped as Hinata stood in front of them silently, lips pressed tightly together. Then as she saw the look on her cousin's face, it dawned on her what she had just said. She gasped, raising her hands to her mouth, her anger ebbing away as swiftly as it had come. I'm so sorry she stuttered, horrified at her own cruelty. Niji shook his head, but before he could speak, Ino barged into the kitchen to tell them that Sakura and Naruto were coming, and lights were switched off, and they waited for the birthday girl. Naruto grinned and waved at her, when she caught his eye, kept very close to Sakura, who looked stunning in a short green dress, which matched her eyes perfectly. Hinata tried to quell any doubts about her appearance, and Naruto Sakura was his best friend after all, even though he had specifically asked Hinata to come. The mood of the evening had been spoiled for her. Niji kept casting looks at her from the opposite side of the room, but she was too ashamed of herself to meet his gaze, and contented herself with sitting quietly in a corner, while the others danced and laughed. Her head jerked up at the sound of Naruto's voice cutting through the noise. Oi. Oi everyone, I've got a special announcement to make. He yelled as he clambered unsteadily onto a table, sounding slightly drunk, with his cheeks flushed and hair adorably ruffled. Go on, tell us. Someone Chaoji she thought shouted, and there were other clamors to hear Naruto's news. Hinata's heart leapt. Was he getting the title of Hokage at last? She clasped her hands together and waited impatiently for his news. He was grinning and looking as though he were about to burst with pride. Sakurich Ann and I are engaged to be married. He exclaimed. Hinata could hear the noise of people shouting their congratulations and joking condolences. She was vaguely aware of Kiba and Lee thumping Naruto on the back and cheering, while Ino and Sakura were hugging each other and crying, with Sai looking on unruffled and Shikamaru and Choji ribbing the blonde about being the first married of the group. She listened blankly to their excited explanations, Naruto telling everyone that he asked Sakura to marry him just before they came back to Konoha, getting ribbed that he never hid his crush all that well, and that well, they had kept it a secret cause the old hag was pretty strict about couples going on missions together wasn't she? It washed over her, the tide of noise. Naruto was getting married. The Sakura. Not to her. The Sakura. To the strong and beautiful Sakura who looked every inch the part of the blushing bride-to-be. Hinata lifted her eyes, trying hard to school her features into impassivity, and met a pair of black ones boring into hers. Sasuke was looking sharply at her, looking suddenly very sober. Hinata turned away, face ablaze, because she knew with a burning certainty that Sasuke knew exactly how stupid she had been. Her gaze fell on Naruto and Sakura, holding hands, looking so impossibly happy that her stomach clenched, and she wanted to vomit. She had been such a blind fool. Naruto came over with Sakura, all smiles and charm, and took her hands that would have thrilled her an hour ago, but now she felt so empty and asked for her congratulations. Hinata never had any reason to be so grateful for Naruto's obliviousness before. 
She plastered a fake smile over her face and told him that really, she was very happy for him and Sakura. She even managed to look at the other girl and sound sincere when she told her that she was sure they'd be happy together. I'm so glad you came, Hinata-chan Naruto told her. You've been a real friend to us, and I really like you, you know. She stared at him and nodded mechanically. Not everyone would have been so ready to accept Sasuke. But then, you've got a big heart Hinata. He sounded so sincere, his wide blue eyes so devoid of any ill intent that Hinata wanted to scream. But instead she stood there and pretended not to be heartbroken and allowed herself to be hugged by Naruto and Sakura, trying desperately to keep up her stoic facade when Sasuke turned up. Congratulations he said impassively, that was quite a surprise. Both Naruto and Sakura looked uncomfortable as Sasuke looked from one to the other. I didn't even know you two were officially together he remarked. Naruto grinned, but it was easy to see that he was nervous. Well, we're Kanoha's best shinobi, great at undercover he said laughing uneasily. Sasuke's expression didn't change. Sakura had a tense smile on her face as she took hold of Naruto's hand. It doesn't make a difference to our friendship she asked Sasuke, does it? Should it? He countered smoothly, almost cruelly. I just wondered if you're keeping it so quiet. You know, with us being friends and all. Hinata looked up at him startled. His face was expressionless, but there was something almost like regret in his eyes. She moved slightly, almost imperceptibly, closer to Sasuke, as though she wanted to remind him that he wasn't completely alone. It wasn't only her who had been hurt by all this. Sakura had her lips pressed thinly together. I didn't want anyone to know we were together before it became serious, not even you, she told the black-haired shinobi. She hesitated slightly before continuing. I wasn't sure how you'd take it. Sasuke smiled crookedly. We'll never know now he said, and there was an uncomfortable silence, Naruto and Sakura, both avoiding Sasuke's gaze. Hinata looked from one to the other and thought that she was glad that her team lacked all the undercurrents running through Team 7's dynamics. They all tensed as Sasuke spoke again. There is one thing I can't understand Sasuke said meditatively, and Sakura and Naruto both looked at him apprehensively. Sakura he murmured, how did you stop Naruto from blurting it out to the whole world? Was it duct tape or bodily threats that did the trick? Sakura stared at him for a second and threw back her head and laughed, while Naruto spluttered and complained at the insult. It seemed all rather forced to Hinata, all this laughter and playful banter. They were obviously relieved, and she wondered at how easily they were fooled by the half-smile playing on Sasuke's face, just as they were by hers, at how they seemed to feel that there was nothing wrong, that everything was normal again. Sasuke cut through Naruto's rant. I think they're waiting for Sakura to cut the cake he told them, and Sakura clapped her hands and pulled Naruto towards the cake, where Lee was enthusiastically waving a huge knife. The Ichiha and the Hayuga stood side by side, away from the crowd, and Hinata was engulfed by a sudden wave of loneliness as she watched the happy couple celebrate. Naruto would never be hers. Never. I'm sorry Sasuke said quietly, and Hinata turned numbly to look at him, wondering why he was sorry. It wasn't as though he had been the fool who kept believing that Naruto Naruto had. She lifted her trembling hand to her temple and wished she was back home, far away from this place. You tried to warn me, I suppose she said bluntly. I didn't know they were he gestured at the party, so serious though. Hinata was silent. Do you want to? She looked at Sasuke, and he motioned towards the door, dark eyes on her face. She nodded mutely and they left, slipping out unnoticed into the silent lamplit streets. No one had noticed her come in, and she was grateful for that much. Sasuke had walked silently with her to the gates of her home, and then left without a word. She was glad to be alone. She needed time to think, to break, to put herself together again. Hinata walked quietly to her room and caught sight of herself in her mirror. She paused and looked at the girl reflected back, with her pale face and straight hair, at the outline of her rounded figure through her yukata. She thought of Sakura's tight dress, which fitted her like a second skin. Naruto likes long hair. She thought of Naruto running his fingers through Sakura's thick silky hair, and her stomach clenched. Your husband will be a lucky man. Her fingers trembled as she fingered the folds of her yukata. What flowers symbolize love? Hinata remembered the primroses Sakura had pinned to her dress. I'm going to get married to Sakura-chan. Hinata stared at her round plain face with her blank wide eyes. Ugly it screamed back at her, and she felt a sudden spurt of despair and anger, and wanted to break it, smash it all to pieces, and never see that failure again. She stopped herself just before her fist smashed through her mirror, and let her hand drop to hang limply by her side. Hinata looked at herself, memorizing her faults one by one, firmly planting her image on her mind. She was nothing but a weird dark girl with the white eyes, a blind foolish girl who deserved all she got. She sank to her knees, resting her forehead against the cool glass and wept. Hinata watched him, hidden by the tree's foliage. She had been surprised to see him there, after all he had been pretty much hung over the night before. 
Then again, she had dragged herself out of bed that morning and made her way to the training grounds, even though it was the last thing she wanted. One might even have said that though they were different, both she and Sasuke were two of a kind, she thought wryly. Sasuke started a new set of katas. Hinata knew that he had noticed her there even though he pretended not to. It gave her a chance to escape, to return back to the safety and peace of her room. Even as a child, she would escape to her room to hide from the disapproving gaze of her father and the disappointment of her kinsfolk, half believing that they wouldn't find her there. She rubbed her red eyes irritably. A foolish notion for a child living in a house where people could see through walls, but one she needed to survive. But this was where all her foolishness had led her to heartache. She bit her lip. She had promised herself she would be strong. She had to be strong. Hinata dug her nails into the bark of the tree. No matter how hard it would be she would not break down in front of anyone. Not even no, not even if she met. Are you going to stay there all day? Hinata started and looked guiltily towards the Achiha, who was looking at her pointedly, while he continued performing his exercises so much for hoping that Sasuke would conveniently ignore her until she made a decision to come out herself. She slid down to the ground, half afraid that he would say something which would make her remember too much, that he would tread where she feared anyone would wander. Sasuke paused and turned his dark gaze on her. Glad you finally decided to come out he said coolly, and she stiffened. She felt a sudden prickle of tears at his tone and quickly blinked. She would not cry, he could not make her cry. Well he said impatiently, are you going to fight or stand there glaring at me? She wondered where the relatively kind Sasuke of the night before had disappeared to. This one seemed in a foul temper, and Hinata was in no mood to try to appease him. I doubt I can start now she said, trying to stop those treacherous tears from starting. She pressed her lips together and took her fighting stance. Well then start. She rushed at him, feeling a sudden surge of irritation as she dealt out her punches. Who did he think he was? He had no right to stand there, ordering her to start. No right at all. Sasuke had dark shadows beneath his eyes, his face stark white against the inky blackness of his hair. He seemed fatigued to Hinata, and for some reason it annoyed her. What reason did he have to look so exhausted? It was she who had spent a sleepless night, miserably berating herself for having been so naive and absurd, tossing and turning in bed as she agonized over having to see Naruto again. You look as though you didn't sleep much last night he commented offhandedly, as he dodged a punch aimed at his face. I didn't Hinata replied curtly and smiled slightly as one of her punches connected. She wanted nothing more than to wipe the unperturbed look off Sasuke's face, make him stop underestimating her. They all did, didn't they? She was only a plain high Uga Hinata, only to be thought of when needed. I see he said, and she bristled at that. What did he mean by that? What could he know? Was he judging her? I see. She was sick of his patronizing tone, sick of the way he assumed she was there to do as he wanted. Hinata was growing increasingly angrier as they fought, and everything he said she took as an insult, a further jab towards her being weak, towards her feelings. Even the way he moved was irritating her, reminding her of the difference in their abilities, and unreasonable as it sounded, she felt sure he was doing it on purpose, to berate her for her foolishness, to remind her how indecorously she had behaved, running after someone who had no interest in her. The thought of that was the final straw, and her cheeks burned in furious indignation. How dare he judge her. He had no right, no right to do this to her, no right to use her in this way, then toss her away, Naruto had no right, she thought furiously, all her feelings of frustration and pain coming to the fore, her self-restraint gone. Naruto had no right to hurt her so even though she was a fool and blind, and she wanted to hit him and hit him and hit him. Someone was calling her, an urgent voice in the midst of her madness, and she could hear herself screaming, the anger and pain and her pride making her want to hit harder, to make someone else hurt the way she was hurting. Hinata. And someone caught her arms as she flailed, anger choking her, and she jerked her arms away, wrapping them around herself, gasping slightly as she looked at him, Sasuke, Sasuke, not Naruto, never Naruto. Never hers. Anata shivered as she stared at the dark eyed Ichiha, breath coming in short gasps as she tried to compose herself, trying to go back to being Hinata instead of this person she didn't recognize. Sasuke she said, almost to herself, Sasuke. It's alright he said gently, as he placed hands on her shoulders. It's alright, Hinata. Hinata looked at him with wounded eyes. It's not she answered, her voice trembling, and it won't be for a long time she continued, before the world went dark. Hinata leaned her head back resting against the tree trunk and closed her eyes. Her head was aching mercilessly. She deserved it, she thought, after that shocking display. The thought of what she'd just done made her cringe with mortification. Never had she behaved so unreasonably and hysterically. She had disgraced herself, humiliated herself for something which she had only herself to blame for. What would Sasu think of her? The thought of the Achiha made her blush hotly. She had attacked him, screamed at him like a fishwife, and then fainted away. 
and why of all people had she broken out in front of the stoic and self-contained Ichiha instead of someone kind and safe like Kibarashino, who wouldn't despise her. Even though that would have meant having to explain all about her feelings about Naruto the wave of depression which engulfed her took her by surprise, sweeping away her embarrassment with the thought of something more painful. Tears pricked her eyes, but she gritted her teeth. She would bear it. But it hurt. It hurt so much. Here. She opened her eyes to see the newly arrived Sasu handing her her water bottle. Hinata took it silently, feeling unable to say a single word, wishing she were anywhere but there. Drink. She obediently lifted the water to her lips, but she felt as though to drink a single drop would choke her. Hinata put her bottle rather quickly on the ground. She had to apologize to him before she could do anything else, and she had to do it before her courage failed her. Sasuke. I she stuttered, trying to find the right words to say as he looked at her expectantly. Instead she burst into tears. I'm so sorry she wept wretchedly, burying her face in her hands. I was so rude and ungrateful, and so horrible to you I'm so sorry she sobbed unrestrainedly, her unhappiness coming to the fore. First the shock of Naruto and Sakura, and now this. Why, why couldn't she have maintained her last shards of dignity? When would this horrible feeling leave her? Stop at Hinata. His voice was quiet and authoritative, and it chilled her to think how much it resembled her father's tone of voice. Hinata was utterly and thoroughly miserable, ashamed of her weakness, and ashamed of her inability to be strong. Look at me. She struggled to control her tears, avoiding his gaze. She didn't want to see the disappointment in Sasuke's eyes, or the look of disgust she was sure to see there. Hinata, look at me. Unable to refuse again, Hinata withdrew her hands from her face and lifted her eyes slowly towards his. A pair of dark eyes bored into hers and she shivered. She wrung her hands agitatedly, another habit she knew annoyed so many people. I Sasuke Sasuke took her hands and she tried unsuccessfully to free herself. Anada, calm down. You're still agitated. His voice was soothing and lacked the anger she was so afraid of. Hinata swallowed and nodded, making an effort to try to calm herself and speak coherently. I behaved so badly towards you she whispered hurriedly. I was so angry and I took it out on you and. Please forgive me, Sasuke. She. Out her head, awaiting for the onslaught which was sure to follow. He snorted, startling her. This was not the answer she had expected. Oh please he said impatiently, noticing her expression. I've done worse, as Kakashi would be happy to tell you. And Sakura would have destroyed half-fire country if anyone had treated her the way that Bakaba have toward you. No dot she looked apologetically at Sasuke. Please don't dot she was angry with Naruto cheerful generous Naruto who would never knowingly hurt anyone, but she still couldn't hear anyone else berate him she was the one at fault. Only she. He's done nothing wrong. Please, don't don't talk about him like that. He gazed at her, his expression unreadable. I see he said quietly, and Hinata wondered what exactly he saw and cringed, doubting that it would be something very flattering. Sasuke sighed and passed his fingers through his thick hair. All right, I won't he muttered, but then he smiled slightly. I'll still think about it though he told her, and she half laughed at that, surprising herself. Who are you really angry with, Hinata? The sudden question caught her by surprise. Hinata stared at him silently. Naruto, she thought. But not really. It was everything she thought, the feeling of having lost someone precious, of her pride being hurt, of anger towards herself for not being something more, for always being second best, of not being like the others, myself she answered softly. Mostly myself. Odd Adi looked at her thoughtfully. At least you acknowledge it. Hinata shot him a look. His last few words seemed laden with meaning, and not a little regret, and she was on the point of asking him why he wouldn't acknowledge his anger towards himself, but then remembered that it might not be an entirely tactful question to ask. I never lost control life this before. It was bound to happen Sasuke said. It runs in your family. It doesn't. Sasuke raised his eyebrows. Niji he pointed out, and Hinata gaped at him, before letting out a short sharp laugh. That was twice, she thought, as she half cried, half laughed into her handkerchief. Twice that he had made her laugh when she had been feeling there could be no more laughter in her world. However, the thought of her sometimes overly dramatic cousin sobered her up. I can't show Niji Niasen or the others I'm upset she said, almost to herself. They'll want to know the reason why and. And it will make things worse he replied, and she nodded. I don't double you want sympathy she said restlessly, fingers digging into the ground. The thought of sympathy terrified her because she was afraid of her not being able to maintain a calm facade. I just want to forget about it dot but how easy would that be? She thought bitterly. How could she tear away a part of her so quickly and painlessly, forget the person who unintentionally had been her main source of courage and hope for so many years? You seem to be asking for it though Sasuke remarked, and she turned to face him, hurt. He raised his hands placatingly, cutting her off before she had a chance to deny it. 
I don't mean you do it intentionally he clarified, vulnerability brings out protective instincts he said cryptically, and if you show your weakness here Hinata winced, wondering if he knew how hard that word hit her, your friends will try to comfort you anyway, even if you don't want them to. Get it Hinata was silent, unable to deny the truth of what Sasuke said. Hinata clenched her fists. However hard it would be, she would bear it alone. Sasuke sighed slightly, interpreting her silence as disagreement. I'm not good at this kind of thing he muttered and made it as if to stand up. No Hinata said as she plucked apologetically at his sleeve, stopping him, and he shot her a quizzical look. I'm sorry Sasuke, you're right. I have to stop feeling sorry for myself and learn to hide my feelings better. She looked down, hiding her features. Niji will be angry with me or pity me if he gets to know about all this she said wretchedly, I don't want that. Shinokun and Kibakun will be worried and disappointed the thought was unbearable. She noticed with some surprise that Sasuke was shaking his head slowly and smiling slightly. You'll never change, will you he asked her, and smirked at her puzzled gaze. I would be more worried about their going to have a little talk with Naruto he continued dryly. Naruto may not be the brightest spark in the box, but even him I'd suspect something if suddenly your cousin and teammates decide to try to tear him apart for your sake. He leaned back his head, resting it on the tree trunk. At least, if I beat up Naruto, none's going to be the wiser for it. Anata listened open-mouthed to this. But why would they she asked lamely. It's my fault. He sighed impatiently. There you go again. Enough with the refrain Hayuga Hinata fell silent. The thought that Sasuke believed so many people would fight in her corner, not pity or berate her, even though she had been a little idiot, made her feel strangely warm inside. And that Sasuke himself the exact meaning of what he had said suddenly sunk in. Sasuke. You you won't really fight with Naruto-kun, will you she said, alarmed. He shot her a lazy look. I always fight with Naruto. Won't it be stranger if I don't he pointed out smugly, and she could think of no reply. She sat in silence beside the Achiha, thoughts whirling in her brain. So many things had happened in the past 24 hours. She'd experienced so many feelings. Elation, regret, sorrow, anger and surprise. Sasuke had surprised her again and again, and she felt grateful to him. Hinata knew he had no reason to have taken care of her, and he had done so, just as though he were Kiba or Shino. But if she allowed him to keep taking care of her, she would not live up to his teachings. She had been weak while he had been trying hard to help her become strong. Hinata made a silent compact with herself. Sasuke. Um. It was a struggle to school herself into appearing calm, but Hinata was determined to do it, and when she turned to face Sasuke even she managed to smile, although the feeling of wanting to burst into tears hadn't left her. See? I've already started to put on a brave face on things she said, eyes bright but voice steady. Sasuke looked at her impassively, and Hinata lifted her chin almost defiantly, half afraid that he doubted her. I will make it through she said with sudden determination and flushed slightly at the look of approval Sasuke gave her. He offered her his hand, and pulled her gently to her feet. His hand was warm and comforting, and Hinata was glad that he was there with her. He will he agreed and she smiled more easily this time, grateful that he believed in her. But. Still I think I may need reminding, at times Hinata told him quietly. Sasuke gave her one of his unreadable looks and half smiled. I'm here he said, and Hinata impulsively wrapped her arms around him, and hugged him. She pulled away, blushing at her daring and half afraid he would be offended, but he did not look displeased. Thank you, Sasuke she told him, and he nodded. Stand up tall, Hinata, and remember your pride. She had been right about one thing. Things would not be alright for a long time to come. She hadn't realized so many people had noticed the extent of her feelings towards Naruto. The other Kanoichi would fall into an embarrassed silence if they were discussing Sakura and Naruto's wedding plans when Hinata approached or adroitly changed the subject. Her teammates and Kurenai watched her covertly during practice and were overly cheerful when she was about. Even A.M. at the Raymond shop squeezed her hand and whispered that she was sorry when Hinata went there. These instances made Hinata cringe whenever she thought about them, and were it not for the thought of Sasuke's disappointment, she would have turned tail and fled. Indeed, it had taken all her self-restraint to keep herself from bursting out when finally Kiba, affectionate and loyal, had wrapped his arms around her shoulders just like Naruto used to do, with the same wide-eyed concern and honesty shining from his face, and begged her to tell him if she was breaking her heart over Naruto. Hinata had looked at the other two, and neither looked surprised at Kiba's question, Kurenai nor Shino were both watching her, waiting for her reaction. She couldn't help the blush which suffused her cheeks, but she forced herself to speak normally. Breaking my heart over Naruto-kun she asked, keeping her face blank. Why would I do that? Kiba stared at her as though she had grown horns. Naruto and Sakura got engaged he said slowly as though speaking to a small child. Hinata shrugged in a way that, if she could have seen it herself, was oddly reminiscent of Sasuke. I was there at Sakura's party, Kibakun she pointed out mildly. Kiba exploded. 
Then why aren't you saying something, screaming your head off or crying? Everyone knows you were crazy about Na Umph Kiba turned to glare at Shino, whose elbow had accidentally done on purpose dug into his side. What the Inazuka asked angrily. Your lack of finesse grates on my nerves the Aburam replied smoothly. Hinata looked from one to the other. These were her friends and she was barefaced lying to them, pretending that nothing had happened. She wondered how shocked they would be if she told them that she had screamed and ranted in front of Sasuke of all people, even trying to beat him up, and how it hurt to be reminded of Naruto and Sakura, and what made everything worse was all the pity she was getting. She felt a bubble of hysterical laughter rising to her throat, and when she thought of how Kiba had looked. Did he think she had lost all of her senses? A sort of post-traumatic stress disorder which all of sick girls go through. She giggled. And when the others turned to look at her, concerned, creasing their faces, looking as though they thought she really had been driven over the edge, she simply couldn't contain herself any longer and started laughing. She laughed and laughed, until her sides ached and tears were streaming down her cheeks, at the absurdity of it all. I am so sorry she gasped, wiping away her tears, but you all l looked, so serious Hinata saw how Kiba and Kurunai looked suddenly relieved, how Shino's shoulders relaxed by a fraction, and she felt something inside her twist, and she felt almost like crying. They had been worrying about her, and all she had been thinking about was how she could try to save face. Anata wrapped her arms around Kiba and smiled brightly at the other two. I'm fine she lied. It was just a little crush, a bit of foolishness, but I never thought people would think I was so serious about it. She always thought of herself a poor liar, too honest and naive to fool others, and yet here were the people who knew her best believing her implicitly, Kiba grinning cheerfully and hugging her, and saying that he was glad, he'd seen that she seemed bearing up exceptionally well, but that they'd wanted to make sure that she was really okay with it all, Shino and Kurunai looking relieved. As her teammates and her sensei left, telling her that they were always there if she needed them, Hinata smiled and nodded at them as she waved goodbye. She stood there for a while in silence before sighing slightly. I really am alright, Shino she said. Her teammate leapt down from his hiding place and came to stand beside her. Hinata looked at him curiously, wondering why he was frowning slightly. The Ichiha left with you last time he said, and Hinata felt cold all over. But she said weakly. You've been sparring with him often as well Aburam continued. You told me some time ago, but I assumed that you did not wish to speak of it. Yes Hinata admitted. He's helped me improve my fighting skills. She pushed a loose strand of hair behind her ear. We were both rather upset about Naruto and Sakura's announcement and we left. That's all really. No response was forthcoming from her teammate, and Hinata turned to look at him half afraid of what he would say. Are you angry with me? That I didn't tell you she asked hurriedly. I don't trust him Shino intoned quietly, but if he helped you, I would be glad. He adjusted his glasses. I am sorry we could not do more he said, and there was a hint of regret in the normally stoic countenance of the Aburam. Hinata swallowed. Why, why did everything she did cause pain to someone else? She reached out and caught at the sleeve of her teammate's jacket. It was a gesture reminiscent of their childhood, something only teammate understood. It was one small sign of affection the Aburam, who disliked people touching him, would allow. You're my friend Shino, my best friend she whispered. And the Ichiha. Is he also your friend Shino asked. Yes. Shino stood silently for a while. Don't forget what he did to his best friends he told her and Hinata stiffened. That is all past now she replied, trying hard to stop her voice from shaking. He's changed. I hope so for your sake, Hinata Shino said gently and plucked at her sleeve. Please be careful. Hinata nodded, not trusting herself to speak. How could she make anyone understand that Sasuke was not the monster they made him out to be? How could she make them see the unusually gentle side the Achiha was capable of showing, without giving her own secrets away? She wrapped her arms around herself and shivered. Why couldn't life be simple for once? Hinata Shino's deep voice startled her. What is it, Shino-kun she asked. Don't let him change you too much. When Hinata realized that the sight of blonde hair didn't make her catch her breath and her heart pound, and that the scent of Sakura blossoms no longer made her feel sick, her first feeling was that of surprise. Her energy had been so focused on surviving past the bitterness which had consumed her, that she hadn't realized that she had actually done it. How long does it take for things to go back the way they were once the foundations of your dreams have been shaken? Hinata could easily answer that it never happens. Either one survives or one doesn't, but something is irrevocably changed. She couldn't explain it. She didn't want Naruto anymore, she still admired him and thought he was a good person and an excellent shinobi, but something was different. You finally lost your rose-tinted glasses was Sasuke's caustic way of putting it when she tried to explain herself. She looked at him with raised eyebrows, a trick she had caught from him, and he snorted. You're so used to putting him on a pedestal you're surprised to be seeing him for what he is he elaborated with exaggerated patience. Perhaps he not amused. She watched Sasuke as he stretched. Things hadn't been the same between him and the other two, not since that night. 
Sasuke still trained with Naruto and Sakura, but there was that constrained politeness between them. She knew both his teammates knew something was wrong, but that they had no idea what to do to rectify the situation they had created. It worried Hinata. After all, it wasn't like Sasuke had a lot of friends, and if he distanced himself from his two oldest friends, what would he have left? Also, notwithstanding the pain they had caused her, she knew the whole situation was causing a strain between Naruto and Sakura. Sasuke hadn't been forthcoming either about what was bothering him. Surely he couldn't be bearing a grudge because they hadn't told him about their situation. She tried to broach the subject in several ways in her mind, but every imagined situation got her blasted to a wall by a very irate Acha. Sasuke didn't take kindly to his very private feelings being probed into, as she'd frequently witnessed when Sakura or Naruto had attempted it. Sasuke sighed. Go on, tell me, I won't kill you whatever it is. But she stuttered as he looked at her with a look which for Sasuke was a cross between amusement and irritation. You get that look on your face when you think I won't notice he said, you want to ask me something, but you're terrified of doing so Dotty passed his fingers through his hair. I can't stand it anymore, so just ask. Hinata scrambled to get her thoughts back together, all well-rehearsed scenarios taking flight. You've never said anything, but they're your best friends, I only thought about how I was feeling, but what about you? What? She took a deep breath in. Are you in love with Sakura she asked quickly, getting ready to run. He stilled. Whatever he'd been waiting for her to ask, it wasn't this. After an unending moment of silence, Hinata ventured to speak. Sasuke she asked timidly, I'm sorry just forget I was. But Sakura the look on his face made Hinata want to laugh and run at the same time. There was such a mixture of annoyance and surprise and something else she couldn't put her finger on that left her in no doubt that whatever the reason was for his distancing himself from his two best friends, love for his pretty teammate was not it. The relief which engulfed her at such a realization came as something of a shock for her too. It's just you haven't been spending much time with them and I, well we've always talked about me, never about you she explained lamely. I thought you were angry at them or hurt because they didn't tell you about them Dotty scowled at her. I don't care that they didn't tell me about their love life or their plans, even though it would have been at least Politetto do so he growled. Hmm. So he had been hurt by their apparent exclusion of him. But I'm not avoiding them because they've no notion of good breeding. Andy have never had feelings for Sakura he ended. Never had, never will. Get it? How about Naruto? What about Naruto? Hinata looked at him from beneath lowered lashes. Some people were saying that you're hurt over Naruto, not Sakura. But the horrified look on his face caused Hinata to collapse, laughing. I'm sorry she gasped, but I can't help it. Tell me it's not true. It is she said, trying to stop laughing, but failing spectacularly. The the hell came up with this crap he caught her by the shoulders, and she shook her head. The amount of gossip about Team 7 was astounding, and this last tidbit about the supposed love triangle between the team members, and occasionally their sensei too, was gaining ground among the gossip mongers. He glared at her. You wouldn't laugh if it were you he said. Truth be told, she hadn't laughed about it when she had first heard of it, the group of Kanoichi who were talking about it had been treated with a sudden shower of ice cold water by a very apologetic Hayuga, who claimed to not have noticed them training nearby. But that little tidbit of information, Hinata had no intention of sharing. Am he growled. I was just trying to give them space, and people came up with this he threw a punch and let his arm drop by his side. I don't know how I'm supposed to behave I feel like I'm butting in on their private time when we're together, but if I don't meet up with them, I'm the idiot who wants to make them feel guilty. Aha. So that was what it was all about. This was the reason most of the higher-ups were against couples forming between team members, as things tended to get uncomfortable. Hinata was glad. At least, if this was the problem, something could be done. Maybe you could talk it over with them she asked timidly. I don't do talking things over he muttered. Then, you could just start acting more like your usual self she suggested. After all, actions speak louder than words. Sasuke looked at her for a long moment. Did Sakura put you up to this? She shook her head, blushing slightly. I was just worried, I'm sorry I was so pushy she mumbled. Dot Sasuke shook his head. You're sneakier than I thought, hi Uga he said. She smiled. I know now it was a crappy idea. Naruto and Hinata were sitting beside the campfire as they waited for the genin they were supervising to come back from their scouting exercise. It was not the first time they had gone out together for such an exercise, but after the first, initially gut-wrenching time for Hinata, who had been trying to avoid spending time alone with Naruto, things went on surprisingly smoothly. Hinata was glad their friendship was still intact, ever more grateful that Naruto was still blissfully oblivious to the fact that Hinata had once loved him. She was now his adopted sister as he often told her, and was not averse to asking for her advice or discussing things with her. Which was probably why Hinata plucked up the courage to ask about the reason he hadn't told Sasuke about him and Sakura. 
Sasuke, he's my best friend, but well, Sakura felt that he might still be unstable, and all that shit Naruto said sheepishly. I told her she was being paranoid, but she thought Sasuke might feel betrayed and gave me some psycho babble or something. He scratched his head. I don't actually understand why we had to keep it so hushed up it's not like Sasuke would have gossiped, but whatever she says, goes. Anata nodded. I see she said, although she didn't, not really. After all, it had ended up having the opposite effect. It still turned out well at the end she said smiling. But nearly didn't he said grimacing slightly. The first couple of months I thought that we'd really screwed up the way he was acting. The way he was avoiding us and acting all polite. It just wasn't Sasuke anymore. Sakura was going nuts, and to be honest, so was I Naruto laughed. Turns out that Tami was trying to be all considerate and stuff, trying to give us space and all that dot he shook his head, he can't get it through his head that he's always part of our family, and that things will never change between us, no matter what goes on between me and Sakura. Anata was silent for a while. It seemed to her that things had already changed irrevocably, and that they would keep changing. She looked at the blonde man beside her and wondered at his irrepressible optimism. That was perhaps what had attracted her in the first place, his ability to stand up again after every fall, his ability to look at the world and smile, no matter what it threw at him. She picked a blade of grass and toyed with it idly. If you don't mind my asking she asked timidly, don't you think it's too early for marriage? Naruto turned to smile at her, that beautiful smile which still made her heart beat a little faster, it was so honest. It's never too early to take a chance at happiness he said. And Sakura is my happiness. He closed his eyes and inhaled deeply as Hinata listened. I never thought I really stood a chance he said, suddenly serious. She was fixated on Sasuke for all these years and always pushed me away. When she told me she loved me back I almost couldn't believe her I thought I was the second choice, just because Sasuke didn't love her. Naruto looked up at the night sky, his face serene. When I realized that she really liked me for who I was he smiled, I couldn't believe my luck. He turned to look at her as she took his hand between both of hers. I am happy for you, Naruto Kun Hinata said simply. You and Sakura-chan were meant for each other. Naruto hugged her. Thank you he said, it means a lot to me that my friends are so happy for us. Hinata blushed slightly, as she felt a flush of guilt at the thought of what he would think if he knew what her initial reaction had been. Still, that was over now. She had been wrong, but it had all come alright in the end. Nah, Hinata, I'm sure you'll find this great guy very soon Naruto said grinning, and she shook her head, smiling embarrassedly. He leaned over confidentially. Is there someone already? He asked teasingly. For some inexplicable reason, Sasu came to mind. Hinata blushed to the roots of her hair and tried to push the thought away. No she said hurriedly, and Naruto smiled impishly. You have to make sure to tell me he told her, so I can make sure he's good enough for you. Later that night, as Hinata was on guard duty, she kept thinking of dark eyes and the smell of burning wood. She wiped the sweat off her forehead. It was a hot and humid afternoon, a time when a cool swim or a refreshing sleep would have been more welcome than gardening, but Hinata needed to think. And working in her garden was the best way to get her thoughts into place. When Kur and I had first broached the idea of taking the exam, Hinata had not exactly been over the moon about it. Yes, she knew she was much improved, yes she knew that she had good chances of succeeding, yes she knew Kanoha needed new, but, but. Why does there always have to be a but in whatever you do Sasuke had asked impatiently when she tried to explain her hesitancy regarding the exams. He'd remained in a huff with her for the rest of their training session, almost taking it as an insult to himself that she was afraid to try out for, and she'd spent the rest of the day in misery, wishing she hadn't opened her mouth. Kiba was also going up for the exam, Shino having passed it the previous year. Kiba had thrown his head back and howled, almost tearing his hair out when she'd said she had to think it over, swearing that she would be the death of him, because how long would it take for her to understand that she was material? Her and I had asked her to think it over, and Shino hadn't said much, only that she should do what she felt was best for her. She absentmindedly plucked at some dry leaves. Then there was that family matter. A small smile tugged at her lips. That, at least, had been a small triumph for Hinata. Her father had called her into his room as soon as she had come back from a mission. She had gone to him immediately, tired and dirty as she was as he ashi had never been the one for patience when it came to his orders being obeyed. Aside from that, Hinata had had a vague suspicion of what this interview was about, and was not about to antagonize her father further. Have you been training with Achiha Sasuke as usual, her father had been abrupt and to the point. Yes. That had surprised him. He had expected apologies, a sign of distress or discomfort for her daring to liaise with a traitor without his permission, but Hinata had had time to prepare herself for this ordeal, and had decided that in this case, attack was the best form of defense. Why is the Achiha training with you the insult there was palpable, and Hinata nearly flinched. Attack, attack, she reminded herself mentally, and brute truth was what would help her. 
I was the only one who will train with him, father, aside from Yuzumaki Naruto and Haruno Sakura. Hinata spoke deferentially, but with a hint of steel in her voice. She did not know how her father would react and steeled herself for a barrage of insults or anger. The silence between them was tense. It was his turn to surprise her. Niji told me you have become stronger. Startled, she lifted her eyes to meet him. I think I have she said. We shall see was her father's reply before he dismissed her. Hinata had been sure that it would result in a sparring match with Hanabi of course, because this was always the measure of all Hinata's progress. How many times had he been placed in this position as a child? But when she faced her opponent, it was Niji whom she was pitted against, Niji the clan genius, not Hanabi. By the time Hinata had realized what this meant, her father nodded and Niji plunged in with his attack. Hinata thanked Sasuke silently for the training he had put her through and fought claw, tooth and nail. This was not a cousin, this was an obstacle to overcome. And when Niji defeated her, she saw in his eyes that even he knew that it had been a close shave. Her father nodded. You have a long way to go Hinata, but you have progressed. He paused. Do what you must not to disappoint me. In short, Hinata thought grimly as she pulled some very persistent weeds from the ground, her father would have accepted her training with a cloud nin if it meant her not being a disgrace to her clan. But what gave her a sense of pride was that her father had chosen to measure her against Niji not Hanabi, and for Hinata, who had yearned for acknowledgement all her life, this was a huge step forward. And it was all thanks to Sasuke. Sasuke. He was so very different from anyone else she knew, this dark-haired stranger who had so suddenly become part of her life. Sasuke had always been there at the back of her conscience, ever since she was a child the sole Ichiha survivor of a tragedy, Itachi's brother, the genius in her class, the heartthrob of her year, Naruto's rival and teammate, the traitor. The redeemed missing Nin, but now he was solidly there in her reality. Sasuke was all that but so much more now. Yes, a mass of contradictions, kind and cruel, intolerant and yet incredibly patient, charming and rude, undeniably handsome, a loner yet sometimes painfully lonely. Anada hissed as she pricked her finger on a bunch of thorns. She watched a rivulet of blood drip slowly from where the skin had been torn. The redness of the blood reminded her of the Sharingan, and she shivered. She would not repeat the same mistake twice. She wouldn't. Or had she already? She could tell Sasuke was pleased when she told him she was going to sit for the exam too. Kurenai told her she was proud of her, Shino pressed her arm, nodded his approval, and Kiba shouted his delight to all four winds. Naruto, Sakura, Ino, Chaoji and Tenten were all trying out for it as well, and whenever they met it was all about the exam and preparations for it. But truth be told, the exam was not the most important thing in Hinata's mind. The realization that Sasuke meant more to her than a friend was almost a blow to her. Older, more experienced and more jaded, Hinata was no longer the girl who followed her crush incessantly with her eyes and blushed and fainted in his presence. Rather, she almost hated herself for it. Hinata swore that she would not ruin this friendship. Sasuke would never have to be embarrassed because of her ridiculous feelings, and she would never fall into ridicule again as she had because of Naruto. Hinata too, had her pride. Hinata was swamped with a feeling of deja vu as she waited at the gates of the Ichiha compound, fingering the small jar she'd prepared for the exams, only this time she wasn't thinking of Naruto. Not that she was thinking of Sasuke either, she hastily reminded herself. She stood straighter as Sasuke came out and nodded to her. She handed him the supplies she'd promised to bring him, so he could pack for the upcoming day before she held out the jar of ointment. It's some of the same ointment she said by way of an explanation, and this time he took it without hesitation. Thank you he said, pocketing it. He bit his lip. Would you like to come in for a cup of tea? Hinata couldn't stop herself. She stared in surprise. As far as she knew, not even Sakura or Naruto had ever been invited into the Ichiha's house, and no one ventured into the Ichiha compound without express invitation from the sole inhabitant, not even when Sasuke was absent. I she hesitated, are you sure? He scowled. I wouldn't have asked you if I wasn't what I he said witheringly. I'd like to she said hurriedly, terrified of his taking offense. He motioned to her to follow him and she did, almost dazed. What struck her was the almost unearthly silence of the compound. It was almost like walking through consecrated ground, and she wondered how Sasu could stand living there, remembering that all his friends and family had been killed there. This is where I live Sasuke said. Lost in her thoughts, Hinata hadn't realized that they were already at Sasuke's house. He led her through a short corridor into the living room and motioned her to sit on the sofa. Hinata settled down, still not entirely comfortable. It was an almost surreal situation. The house was neat and clean, everything impeccably in place. Only a stray book betrayed that someone lived there. I just use the kitchen and the bedroom mostly Sasuke said, as though reading her mind. I'm mostly out of the house anyway Dottie stretched. I'll go make the tea then. There he paused and looked at her. Would you let me make the tea she asked doubtfully. 
She had seen his attempts at cooking, she wasn't entirely sure he could be trusted with the making of tea. And Hinata was picky about her tea. Sasuke simply looked at her from beneath lowered eyebrows, and she blushed. Don't you trust me to make tea he asked as Hinata grew redder and redder. I'm sorry she said, fidgeting slightly. It's just that Sasuke sighed. He beckoned to her to follow him. She sat at the kitchen table and watched him as he started brewing the tea from scratch. He was surprisingly adept, and when he slid a teacup in front of her, she had no hesitation in trying it. It's good Hinata said smiling. There's no need to sound so surprised Sasuke said, smirking as he sipped his tea. I'm actually very good at making tea. He placed his cup on his saucer. Though to be honest he said, I prefer yours. Hinata blushed slightly and busied herself with drinking her tea. Sasuke watched her for a second before turning to the refrigerator. I almost forgot he said. He pushed a plate of cinnamon rolls towards her. Edie said. You'll need your energy for tomorrow. I thought you didn't like sweet things Hinata said as she took a roll, anticipating the sweetness as she bit into it. I don't Sasuke said briefly, but I didn't get them for me. Hinata paused in the middle of chewing. He had gotten them for her. But why had he? Any news about how we're going to be set up for the exam Sasuke asked abruptly, and Hinata happily followed his lead, steering away from potentially dangerous conversations. Hinata was appalled when she realized how late it was. They had been talking for hours, unaware of the time. She apologized fervently for making his stay up so late, when they should have been both preparing for the journey to the sand the following day. Sasuke shrugged away her apologies and told her he was accompanying her home. There's no need to walk that far Sasuke Hinata said. It's dark outside he replied, and nothing Hinata could say, including the fact that a 10-minute walk in Kanoha was hardly more dangerous than a solo spy mission, would dissuade him. The Hayuga gave up. She would have enjoyed the walk had she not been worried about how she was wasting Sasuke's time. An idea struck her as they got to the Hayuga compound. Will you wait for me? I won't be long she said as she ran inside, leaving the bemused Ichiha waiting for her. She was back in a few minutes with a sprig of thyme in her hand. Sasuke Hinata floundered, trying to formulate what she wanted to say as he stood there, piercing dark eyes trained on her. I she held it out to Sasuke and bowed slightly. He took it and stared at it for a second before turning his gaze onto her. Hinata flushed to the roots of her hair, suddenly realizing how foolish it must seem to him. I wanted Ayatits for courage and strength and good luck she explained lamely, wishing that she hadn't acted so impulsively. She dropped her gaze. I knew that dot the tone in his voice surprised her. There was a hint of nostalgia. My mother used to tell me about how herbs and flowers have different meanings he said. Rosemary for remembrance, time for courage, basil for love I've forgotten most of them though he said, fingering it. Hinata stood silent and she wondered at all the memories she had inadvertently brought up. His face had a look which was hard to discern, and she wished she could touch his face and ask him if there was something wrong. But her foolish foolish emotions had forced her to create a barrier, and she was conscious of every move she made. Sasuke. Hinata. They both stopped and smiled at each other embarrassed at having spoken together. You go first Sasuke Hinata said, but he shook his head at her. It will keep he said. What were you going to say? Good luck she said quietly, wishing that she could allow herself to say more. He nodded. Good luck to you too, Hinata he said and leaned over and flicked her on her forehead. Become he told her and disappeared into the darkness. Hinata had only been to the sand twice in her life before. She remembered it as dry, droughty and dusty, unsurprisingly, nothing had changed except for the amount of people waiting at the gates to present their papers to go in. Things had not gone exceedingly well on the way to Suna. Actually, things had gone abysmally, and it was with a collective sigh of relief that the whole group stepped into Suna and finally, Finala went their separate ways. Hiba and Tenten had chosen to stick like two very determined limpets to Hinata's side from the second they had left Kanoha. Tenten's sudden fondness for her company had Niji's fingerprints all over it, and Hinata wondered exactly how much her cousin knew, or rather how much he thought he knew. Hiba had immediately sensed something was not as usual with Hinata, and thankfully had put it down to extreme nerves for the exam, and thought to be the supportive and encouraging teammate, present all the time, just in case she needed to confide in him. Lee had been drawn towards their group by the presence of his teammate and by the idea that he could imbue a youthful flower, namely Hinata, with a passion for life, which he did enthusiastically and constantly. There was also the little matter of Sasuke looking like a thundercloud and glaring daggers at her entourage, which obviously got a response from the irascible Kiba. This nearly led to a fight between the two of them, but luckily, or unluckily, depending on your viewpoint, Naruto, Ino and Sakura were there to intervene, not very diplomatically, which then caused Sakura and Ino to argue, which then obviously involved both Naruto and the poor Chaoji, who looked as unhappy as Hinata felt. She had never wanted to block people's vocal cords so badly with her Juunkin. In Hinata's opinion, silence was definitely underrated. 
On arriving at Suna and registering, they had separated, Naruto and Sakura had been whisked away by the Sand siblings, Sasuke had simply disappeared, and the others had decided to go to the inn and then go out to eat. Inada had politely but very determinedly refused to go out to eat and had complained of a headache and locked herself in her room, determined to scrounge up some food when the rest were safely and better far away. With a sigh of pure bliss, she had taken a long luxurious bath in glorious peace and then collapsed on the bed. She was almost asleep when she was jerked back to alertness by a soft tap on her window. She activated her by Akigen quickly, reassuring herself that this was no enemy, and she padded towards the window and opened it. Sasuke slipped in silently. He shoved a paper bag emanating tantalizing smells towards her. Oh Hinata said, and her stomach growled. She blushed, and Sasuke smirked. Let's eat he said, and slid down on the floor, sitting cross-legged. Hinata did likewise, and opened the bag bringing out the various containers and setting them between them. No plate she asked, and smiled as he raised his eyebrows. Don't fuss on details, woman Sasuke said as he handed her a pair of chopsticks. If you're slow, there won't be anything left he remarked, and popped a rice ball into his mouth. Hanada laughed and leaned back, feeling at ease for the first time since they started out. They ate, passing the food back and forth between them, keeping the conversation brief. Hanada finally put her chopsticks down with a contented sigh. I'm sorry about what happened with Kiba she said. I don't want to talk about Kiba Sasuke said grimacing. I don't even want to think about Kiba. Or Naruto, or Lee. Or anyone with a loud high-pitched voice for a long, long time possibly never. Hanada laughed. She had missed this, missed it more than she cared to admit. They meant well she said mildly, though privately she agreed with him, especially about the high-pitched voices. Hadat Sasuke didn't look convinced. He shifted slightly, and Hinata became aware of the closeness of their bodies, another inch and she could place her hand on his, feel the warmth of his skin seeping into hers. She lifted her eyes and met his, there was a flash in them which both excited and terrified her, and when he leaned forward and brushed her lips with his, she felt someone approaching, and her first instinct was to draw back. Sasuke's eyes were glittering dangerously, and she shivered. She stood up, blushing violently, almost toppling over in her urgency as someone came up the stairs. I think you should go she croaked out, her voice almost betraying her. I can hear Kiba and the others, and the expression on his face was blank. Of course he said coolly. We wouldn't want to ruin your reputation now, would we? Sasuke Hinata was distressed. That's not what I meant it was all wrong, and it was her first kiss, and what on earth was she doing? Somebody knocked at the door and called out to Hinata. She could have screamed in frustration at the horrible timing, her heart beating wildly as Sasuke glanced briefly at the door. He shrugged. It doesn't matter. Hinata pressed her lips to his and she felt him respond. Reluctantly, she broke away and Sasuke looked at her thoughtfully. Apology accepted he murmured and she could hear the smile in his voice. He touched her face and was gone. Hinata took a moment to compose herself before she went to answer the door. Funny how a single kiss, or two if you wanted to be precise, could change your world. True, she wasn't sure what it meant, did a kiss qualify as the start of a relationship? Or was it simply a friendly gesture? There were so many ifs and buts, and only Sasu could clear them up. Which he would, once all this was over and done with. Anada sternly forced herself to concentrate on the more important matter at hand, namely the at hand, but a small part of herself was dancing with joy. She felt like a 13-year-old with a crush, and to put it in playground jargon Sasuke clicked at her. It was hard to stop smiling. She barely had time to speak to her companions the next day, and no time to do anything but smile quickly at Sasuke. The throng of people waiting to watch, shinobi and civilians alike, and from what she heard, it was evident that the main attraction were Naruto and Sasuke, as their fame had spread throughout the shinobi nations. The exam was divided into four parts, a written part, full of problems and scenarios that Hinata worked through with dogged determination and a good bit of cheating, a survival quest, where they had three days to find seven hidden keys while trapped in an underground maze, where the Konohan Inn studiously avoided running into each other so they wouldn't have to fight, and of course, finally. Two battles, the first of which involved being paired with a shinobi from one's own village, and fighting against another pair and the second with a final battle between the remaining groups. It could have been simply luck, but from the small quirk of the lips as he fished through the names, Hinata suspected some form of elaborate cheating, when the Achiha picked her name out of the bag to be his partner. Not that she minded. Not that she minded at all. When her eyes met Sasuke's as their names were called, she held his gaze for some time before looking away. She told herself that her heart was beating wildly in anticipation of the match, that the blush on her cheeks had nothing to do with the slight smile the Achiha gave her as they walked together into the arena. The cloud nin they faced stood no chance. Hinata and Sasuke's movements were like that of a practice dance, synchronized and flawless. Sharingan and Bayakugan fought together side by side, as though it were the most natural thing in the world. 
and when they were declared the winners, she didn't even try to tell herself that her elation was only because they had won and made it into the finals, and that is well done, Hinata was no different that if it had been said to her by Shino or Kiba, that when their arms brushed accidentally together, it hadn't made her catch her breath and shiver. Irony then that in the final battle Sasuke and she were pitted against each other. But although Hinata knew that she was going to lose, she gave it her all. When she forfeited, it was with the knowledge that she hadn't let Sasuke down, that she had no regrets about the way she had fought. Hinata stole back to the inn where they were staying to see whether Sasuke was fine. They were allowed to celebrate their success as new in one of the taverns, all of them bar the Achiha, who had said that he'd join them later on, but it never made it. Sasuke and Hinata hadn't even had time to talk, someone was always around. Perhaps this would be the ideal time to talk. Or perhaps not, she thought, frowning as she made her way upstairs. She told herself that it was ridiculous to be so worried, and that the fiercely independent Achiha wouldn't thank her for concerning herself with his business, but she couldn't bat down the unease she was feeling. She could have sworn that she had seen Kakashi Sensei in the crowd, although he hadn't been scheduled to be there, and that, coupled with Sasuke's absence, only served to increase her certainty that something was off. She tensed as she approached Sasuke's room and activated her by Akigen. Kakashi Sensei was with Sasuke, and neither of them looked like the reason Kakashi was there was to congratulate his recalcitrant ex student. Hinata paused. It wasn't really her business to butt in, and if Sasuke had wanted her to know about this, he would tell her, but she threw all her doubts to the wind and crept closer, finding herself the best position to listen. A few months or so, maybe more. But you have to go now. Kakashi was looking carefully at the Achiha, who stared back impassively. The older man sighed. I know you've just settled, but really, this mission is an opportunity. Let's face it, you're not the most popular guy with the old geezers, but if you pull this off, you'll have a better chance of wiping your slate clean. He paused. Well, at least smudging it into something illegible. Kakashi rubbed the back of his head. Not to mention that Tsunade will take off the rest of your seals, of course. A couple of months, Sasuke repeated thoughtfully. Kakashi raised his eyebrows. Worried about the time, Sasuke. Any ties back home? Is there a hot little number or perhaps dot dot Kakashi paused slyly to give more emphasis dot dot, there's that special summoning for you beside the fireside in Kanoha the white haired winked lecherously at the Achiha who stood silent for a moment before lifting his dark cold eyes up to meet Kakashi. Don't be ridiculous. Hinata fled. When Kakashi appeared instead of Sasuke in the morning and cheerfully informed the group that to celebrate his becoming, soon aided had Sasuke deployed on a mission, Hinata was pale but compassed and remained silent amongst the barrage of questions the others threw at the elder dot. Perhaps if she had been concentrating less on appearing uncaring, she would have noticed the covert glance Kakashi had thrown her way. It was a dark cold morning, with rain falling half-heartedly, and she thought bitterly that it matched her mood these days. It was a day like any other since she got back from her exam, when she wasn't on missions, with her waking up at an unearthly hour before any normal shinobi would be up, she automatically excluded Gai Sensei and Lee San, and going to train there. Her designated training area before her official training schedule. She used to like the place it was secluded and quiet, and the surrounding overgrowth of trees and shrubs ensured that she would be away from prying and judgmental eyes. Now, she surveyed the area and wondered why she had bothered to come to this place chock full of memories, again. Pride, she thought. Her stupid childish pride which made her pretend to the world that she didn't mind being used and then tossed away. And the desperate irrational hope that when she'd come here she'd find Sasuke waiting for her as she always had. She swallowed. It had been five months since he had been sent on that mission, five months of intense almost unbearable loneliness for her. He had been her constant companion, her friend and mentor, and there had been the promise of something more, and then he had disappeared without a word, without even a note. And she had thought that perhaps perhaps. What a foolish girl. What high expectations. Everyone had warned her what type of person he was. They'd all warned her that he was not trustworthy, that he was not friend material. She shivered and pulled her jacket tightly about her. Well, Hinata thought dully, at least no one knew what limit she'd crossed this time. It was of no consequence. She'd come through it before and she'd survived this time as well. She'd have thought that the heartache would be gone after all this time. Hinata bit her lip and turned away. And then she saw him. He was standing at the edge of the training ground, looking at her, his dark wet hair plastered against his forehead. Hinata watched as he started walking towards her, willing it not to be a dream, trying to keep hold on her dignity, torn between anger and relief. He stood in front of her, looking as he always did, and her heart clenched at the familiarity of it all. I hope you would still come here he said quietly, I didn't know if you would dot she stared at him silently, struggling to keep control of her emotions. He didn't play fair, she thought hazily. It wasn't right to walk up to her like this and talk to her with easy familiarity, as though he hadn't left without a thought. 
Anada needed time to clear her mind, to believe that he was there, that he had really come back. She wanted to make sure he was okay, begging him never to leave again. She wanted to scream at him, shake him, ask him why he considered her as nothing, but she couldn't, because she was nothing to him. Anada Sasuke was searching her gaze, looking for some sort of response. I am glad to see that you have returned safely, Sasuke she said formally. There was no time. She just needed to get away before breaking and humiliating herself further. She bowed slightly as she wanted to, and turned to leave, wiping away the hot droplets of water coursing down her cheeks, and wishing the rain would stop. She felt his hand on her arm, and startled, she looked up into his black eyes as he spoke. You're crying. Anada didn't know if it was contempt or pity in his voice, and she didn't care. She just wanted to leave. It's the rain Hinata told him, while trying to smile and wishing that she could just disappear. It stopped raining a while ago he said, keeping a firm hold of her arm. Hinata looked away, feeling a familiar flush creep up her cheeks. Would she ever stop making a fool of herself? She breathed in deeply and tried to compose herself, trying to stop herself from breaking down in public, trying to gather the vestiges of her pride and be strong. His voice cut through her thoughts. I never saw you cry before Sasu glent towards her, and she shrunk back. Hinata, what's wrong? She slapped him. She was trembling, treacherous tears still coursing down her cheeks, glaring at him. He made no move to touch his cheek which was reddening where she had hit him. You left she said. You left and you told Kakashi sensei that you had no one here waiting for you. Dadi remained silent, and Hinata clenched her fists. I thought I was someone she said bitterly. I was wrong. Dot she swallowed. I have to go now she said as she tried unsuccessfully to shrug off his hand, and you should go too. He shook his head, and this enraged her further. She pulled backwards angrily, please let me go she hadn't been prepared for the sudden flash of anger, as he grabbed her by the shoulders. Not until you listen to me Sasu growled, pulling her towards him. You little fool, why won't you listen to me he was angry, and it showed, do you know that I spent the little time I had left in Suna looking for you? With Kakashi breathing down my neck his eyes flashed. I told Kakashi that I had no one in Konoha because I wanted to speak to you first. I needed to ask you if you would wait for me. You you acted almost ashamed to be around me, what would you have said if I had told someone that you were the one I wanted to be with his fingers dug into her shoulders, and she winced. Tell me Hinata. I didn't, I wasn't ashamed Hinata was crying in earnest now. I just thought that you didn't care I didn't know, I'm so sorry, so very sorry she had been a fool. After hearing that conversation between Kakashi and Sasuke, she had chosen to hide herself away from prying eyes. So much heartache could have been saved if she had. She sobbed, regretting all the time she had wasted, but a sense of relief was washing over her, as the full meaning of what he was saying dawned on her. Okami I'm so sorry, Hinata. Sasuke looked contrite. I didn't mean he suddenly put his hand into his breast pocket and drew out a small shriveled plant. Look he told her. Hinata wiped her eyes and stared. It was a small sprig of time, pressed between two small pieces of paper, as though the owner had wanted to preserve it. Her eyes traveled from it to Sasuke, who flushed slightly. I do care he mumbled. I'm just not good at these things. Hanada took the poor little plant from his hands, a small token she'd given him on a whim which he had kept like a precious gift, and pressed it to her lips. I was so angry with you she whispered. I thought you had no use anymore for me, and I, but you're a much better person than I am. She bowed her head, almost ashamed to meet his gaze. I missed you so much, Sasuke, so much that it hurt every day she whispered. Sasuke gently cupped her face in his hand and lifted it towards him. He kissed her on the forehead. It felt so very, very right. When he drew back, she gazed at him, realizing how well she knew every feature of his face, at how time had only increased her longing for him, how much she was afraid of losing him. Be with me Hinata. She touched his face, tracing a line down his cheek, and marveled at the thought that this man wanted to be with her, wanted to be with someone who was so-so. I need you. Sasuke hesitated. Sometimes I will hurt you. I'm not a good person. But even if I go away sometimes, I'll be back. I'll never leave you behind, Hinata. She nodded, happy tears falling unashamedly as she wrapped her arms around him and leaned her head on his chest. I know. I won't make the same mistake again she said. I love you Sasuke. I love you. I love you. One year later. The dark-haired shinobi immediately sensed another presence as he reached the outskirts of Konoha. He paused, black eyes scanning the perimeter. He smiled. He would always return. She would always be there to greet him. Hidema, Hinata. The Kanoichi with the white all-seeing eyes, wrapped her arms round him, resting her head against his chest, listening to his heartbeat in tandem with hers and smiled. The Kari, Sasuke. Welcome home.